Good afternoon and welcome to BBC News. The UK's shale gas commissioner has resigned after only six months in the job, saying the government is paying too much attention to a small but noisy environmental lobby and consequently there is a de facto ban on fracking. Natasha Engel was tasked with uniting communities over the controversial process but says stringent rules are stopping the industry from being successful, as John McManus reports. Is this a vision of the UK's future energy market? Hydraulic fracturing or fracking, in this case at a site in Lancashire? Well, maybe not, because despite government support for shale gas exploration, the woman in charge of inspiring confidence in the project has just quit. Certainly since I first started six months ago, there was always an understanding that fracking was going to really struggle to develop if these really ridiculously low limits on, <clears throat> on earth tremors were going to be kept in place. And the understanding was always that they would be reviewed um, and that they would be raised when it was safe to do so. And that's not happening. And it means that there's a sort of a restriction placed on fracking that's not placed on any other extractive industry in the country. Retrieving gas through fracking involves pumping water, sand and chemicals at high pressure into shale rock. When that rock fractures, the gas is released, then brought to the surface. The industry says it's safe, but it can cause earth tremors. To reassure local communities, fracking must pause if those tremors reach a magnitude of 0.5. This site has had to stop work several times. Natasha Engel says that rule amounts to a de facto ban. Those campaigners aren't just worried about tremors. They say climate changing fossil fuels should stay underground. In Scotland, fracking remains under a moratorium. Holyrood still hasn't decided how to proceed. Supporters in the US say fracking there has lowered gas bills, but some states have still banned it. The government here maintains that shale gas is both environmentally and consumer friendly. Now it needs to find somebody new to make that case. John McManus, BBC News. A spokesperson said the government supported the development of the shale industry in the UK because it could have the potential to be a new domestic energy source and create thousands of well-paid quality jobs. They also said the government was confident that current regulations strike the right balance in ensuring the industry can develop while ensuring any operations are carried out safely and responsibly. Well, joining us now is Craig Bennett, who is the Chief Executive of Friends of the Earth. And it's very good of you to uh, join us on this Sunday, Mr Bennett. Um, Natasha Engel says she resigned because government policy is driven by an environmental lobbying agenda rather than science. Is she right? If only, if only we could say the government agenda was uh, driven by the environmental lobby, then I think the world would be in a much better place. But if we as Friends of the Earth and working with communities fighting fracking have had a big success here in actually stopping this industry for the last seven, eight years, despite all this pressure from this huge industry lobby to try and get it going, then that's a badge I and others will wear with pride. Don't we have the most stringent regulations in the world on fracking? No, we don't, because, of course, what you see in many parts of the world is fracking being banned entirely. Many states in the United States, in Wales, in Scotland, in Ireland, in France, in many other European countries, fracking is banned. So why do we want to force it on English communities that don't want it? Um, I think banning fracking altogether is much more stringent regulation than allowing it to happen under certain conditions. But if fracking is banned... How will we meet our energy needs in the future? I mean, at the minute, we're spending £7 billion importing gas every year. Yeah, well, we're obviously going to have to pay for energy unless, of course, it's homegrown, coming from the sun, the wind, the sea and the tides. And actually, renewable energy is by far the cheapest uh, energy in the long term. Obviously, there's the upfront cost of putting the renewable energy in place, but then actually the energy that's delivered daily comes for free from nature as opposed to paying big corporations for the oil and gas. But, you know, this is all a distraction from the real issue, which, of course, is cli the climate emergency that uh, millions of people now recognise we're under. In a context of climate change, when scientists are being very clear 
the, of the uh, 80, uh, 80, 90 percent of the fossil fuels we've already found, already identified, we need to leave in the ground and we can't burn. Why on earth would we go looking for yet more of the stuff? I mean, we've got a big enough problem to try and wind down the fossil fuels that we're already using and to do that as fast as possible. It's absolutely absurd to suggest that we go looking for yet more of the stuff. And then the suggestion by Natasha Engel that somehow uh, shale gas is low carbon just proves how unfit she was to do this job. The very, very best you could ever say in the best circumstances is that shale gas is the equivalent of moving perhaps from a high tar cigarette to a medium tar cigarette when your doctor is saying you need to give up completely. Uh, in some circumstances, if you include methane leakage from shale gas operations, um, then actually it's just as bad as burning coal or oil. So the idea that shale gas was ever going to be an uh, energy supply for Britain that was fit for the future um, is ludicrous. What about the government's argument that the industry will create thousands of well-paid quality jobs and indeed uh, local communities where fracking was supposed to take place, uh, some of them, particularly in areas where there used to be a thriving coal industry, have welcomed the idea of having those extra jobs? I think the only job creation that we've seen from the fracking industry really so far is the security guards that have been employed to stop local people uh, campaigning and protesting outside fracking sites, which they hate and they don't want anywhere near where they live. If you're really talking about jobs that are going to be sustainable and last in the long term, that's why we need to invest in renewable energy. Because if you take somewhere like the northwest of England, where, of course, you've seen the only fracking site uh, up at Preston New Road over the last uh, month, few months or so on, the northwest of England has abundant resources of renewable energy. Just think of all those offshore wind farms. Uh, think of the tidal uh, energy but that it will have there. But they're not providing enough, Geothermal. are they? That's the Sorry? problem. You're making impossible demands. They're not providing enough. That's the problem. Uh, what, what are not providing enough? Renewable energy, it provided about a third of our electricity for the UK last year. Um, at time, you know, for Denmark, renewable energy, offshore wind alone provided 40% of energy last year. Um, if we really got serious about renewable energy and coupled it with energy efficiency, of course, it's very clear you could supply the UK with 100% renewable energy. And think about uh, if actually the UK was a lead on this rather than a laggard. Think about how we develop that technology and those skills and then export them around the world. For uh, In the 21st century, it's really clear that that's the future, not okay. peddling some myths about dinosaur old industries from the 1970s of oil and gas and talking about we can, how we can exploit oil and gas as if it's a completely separate issue from tackling climate change. It's just really simple. We're not going to solve climate change by looking for yet more oil and gas okay. and coal. I find it really strange that the government finds that hard to understand. We must leave it there, Craig Bennett from Friends of the Earth. Um, thanks so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Thank you.